Uh, hi, everyone. This is Ursula Lauper. I'm with the New York State Department of Health, and uh, it's been great to uh, be working with this team on starting to plan uh, the 2022 program. Um, so Inyang and I have not really had it. Like, we've been meeting a lot, trying to get everything organized and getting the, the calls for abstracts out, um, but we have not had a chance to really think through what we would be saying, at least I haven't, uh, on this call. So, um, uh, but what I, I'll start off with some immediate announcements and then maybe we can kind of back up a little bit. So uh, literally just within the last, uh, this morning, uh, we all agreed to extend uh, the deadline for the session proposals that was those were originally going to be due on February 28th and so we pushed that back to March 11th in case anybody that you or anyone you know might has been thinking about it and panicking looking at those due dates that has been pushed back and we're trying to be as flexible as possible we know there have been some issues um, that with the delay due to migrating to the new platform um, so that's just a first heads up and I'll step back um, before diving into Natalie's questions. Um, Inyang, anything else we should be saying now? Hi, everyone. My name is Inyang Uwak. Um, thank you, Natalie, for the introduction. Uh, so I'm a senior epidemiologist at the, city of, the CDC Foundation, and I also work with the City of Houston Health Department. And yeah, um, thanks, um, Ursula, for the updates on um, the deadlines that have been moved. Uh, we can, I mean, uh, we didn't get the chance to um, walk through uh, what we'll be saying today, but we can do a, a demo, like, you know, just showing um, the newbies how um, to navigate the um, website and find out where you can um, sign up to be an abstract reviewer or submit an abstract, or and we can walk you through where you can even get information as to what a full session proposal is, what an abstract, an individual abstract is. And yeah, it's all there on the website. So we can do that demo whenever you're ready. Yeah, go for it. And I think I made it so you were both co-hosts. So whoever wants to oh. share screen. Okay, I can, I can quickly share screen. So um, share screen, share. Okay, I believe, um, can you all see my screen? Great. So I, I believe you all have received this email, you know, just um, giving us all heads, heads up on um, what to expect as we're going, um, preparing for the uh, annual meeting, you know, call for abstract is out and it's open. Uh, individual abstracts are also, would be open, um, call for individual abstract will be open on the 1st of March and um, deadline would be, is um, April 30th and, um, Call for full session proposal is open and has been extended. Deadline has been extended to March the 11th. Those are the two major um, calls we all should be um, keeping our minds on right now, the full session proposal and individual abstract um, submissions. Um, I will just go straight to the environment, the APHO website. So- um, Hey, Inyang, see. while you're I navigating- think, Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just going to add one quick thing um, right. uh, about the distinction, well, the, which there isn't, or just definitions of full session proposal and invited session proposal. Right. I think this was one thing that um, Natalie wanted us just to touch on. Essentially, they're exactly the same thing. So I remember, you know, I had I put together a session proposal a couple of years ago, um, and I was really confused by that. Uh, whenever I see invited session, does that mean that APHA is going to reach out and invite me to organize a session? And the answer to that is no. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a session organizer, you have an idea, maybe you have some people in mind and you are the one going out inviting people to join your session. So if you see full session proposal uh, or invited session, essentially they're exactly the same thing. So that's all I have to say on that. Thanks. All right. Thanks for um, explaining that, Marissa. Um So we're here. This is the environment section. So I probably should go back a step so we can... Um, let's see. All right, let's do one more step backwards. Okay, I believe this is the landing page. Uh, 
Well, I'm already logged in, but that's fine. So we have the cover abstract here. You go down and uh, let's see. Cover abstract now open. Then you click on this. It will take you to the APHA call for abstracts page. Now you will navigate this down to look for um, the session, uh, section, my bad, excuse me. So we're looking for the environment section. There you go, click on the environment. So um, here you see our deadlines. We need to change, up, up, update this. Uh, full session proposals are due March the 11th now. You see all the deadlines um, for the individual abstracts and student achievement poster awards abstract. Now, if you're interested in submitting an abstract, you would then scroll down. You have your abstract already prepared in a Word document. You would go down to the bottom, right to the bottom and click on abstract submission form. So this is the new hub um, platform that APGA has created for abstract submissions. Now you will select here in the drop down menu. My bad, excuse me. Right. What program? And um, for us, it's going to be environment section. So I'll just click environment here. You click on your topic, and these are the topic section um, topics um, under the environment section. So you have air, water, land, and climate, building healthy, resilient communities, chemicals, and health. So you just scroll down and pick the one that best describes your or covers um, your abstracts. And click that. I would go with uh, let's see, building healthy environments. Then your abstract title will go in here. Abstract text will go in here. Presentation format. So you can basically choose which um, you prefer or no preference and um, those that are reviewing will choose which um, will be appropriate for you. Learning outcome, learning outcome two, um, learning outcome three, I think you need to say at least provide three measurable concrete outcomes each state, um, sentence with one of the objectives defined, list, describe, discuss, you know, that. Then learning areas, you select up to six learning areas based off of your abstract. Health indicators, you select up to three. Then um, if you need to have any comments, then you put in your presenter information. Mine is automatically populated, but you impute all the ones that have the asterisks, the red asterisks, you know, would need to be imputed. Then as you scroll down, your student, you know, you answer that. If you want to add a headshot, great, but it's not like compulsory. Uh, membership and registration requirements. Let's see what that says. Okay, yes, yeah, so you have to be a member of APH and register for the meeting. You just select yes to that. Conflict of interest. Then um, here will be disclosure form. Just click here to um, yes. Okay, this will be no. This is no. for bias, personal bias. Then um, over here, you write about how, what makes you qualified um, to be an abstract author and all that. And your signature and author information. You have the option to add all the authors that are your co-authors um, that are on your abstract. Then you can either save as draft and come back to it later, or if you're, you're done with it, you just hit submit and um, you should be good to go. At this point, I'd like to pause if there's any questions. It's almost like the same format from before, just a few differences at the hub. And again, just a quick reminder that this is the form for an individual abstract. And That's right. if you are interested in submitting a session abstract, uh, then ping uh, one of us for the form and we'll be happy to send it to you. Again, that's a whole separate process because the due date is sooner and uh, we wanna make sure that we get you feedback in case the session is not accepted so that people still have time to submit an individual abstract. And uh, yeah, that's uh, already on the form. And yes. yeah, just through, thanks. No, sure. So this is just a form for uh, full session proposal. 
right? And like Osula said, that's a, a little bit of a different process because you you would reach out to us and we'll send you the form. Then you fill out the form and send and submit it before um, March 11th on or before March 11th. That's what the form looks like. Just um, to give you an idea. And Natalie, I was just wondering, I mean, I'm happy to send out the form you know, um, when people request it. I think Ian Young and I, we've been doing a great job tag teaming as the emails come in, but is there a place where this could be posted and people could grab it if they need it? Just thinking that might be a little more, Absolutely. I mean, it might be too late at this point, but just wondering. Yeah, I'll kick it to Raquel and Natasha who ran the show the last few years. I'm, I'm guessing it was, um, so that they weren't overwhelmed with random submissions, but I don't know. And I think in the long run, we probably want to just get it online um, because it's still a good old fashioned like Word doc, right? Or a Google doc that's editable, Natasha. I don't know, Raquel and Natasha, if you want to add anything. Well, we used that uh, Word document uh, because it was inherited. So <laughs> we just did not change the process. Uh, I don't see any issues with uh, in the future changing it into a, a, a Google Doc or some other process. Um, it needs to be, uh, there are several, several fields to fill in. So for a Google Doc, it would need to be carefully uh, prepared. Maybe throughout the year we can, you know, work on it so that it's ready for next year, but it wouldn't be something like super quick. Um, just to make sure that we would get all the information. Uh, in our case, Natasha and I asked people to email us both just to make sure that we would, um, you know, keep a good uh, grasp of all the submissions. Right. We did not have a specific place to, uh, to store them. I mean, we, we, we use our own Google Drives. But um, if the section has a Google Drive that could be used, then it would be a good idea to, to add a folder and store the proposals there. But yeah, I would I suggest that people would send them to Inyang and Ursula, and then yeah. they would upload. Absolutely. It was helpful for us to receive them that way because that way we could track who requested one and we could follow up if right. they hadn't submitted it yet, send, mm -hmm. send a reminder. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it would increase or decrease participation by people just being able to go to a link at their own leisure and at their own will, but it would be helpful to know who is um, taking the form and planning to use it. Um, and for the form, I'll specify what I put in the chat. If if um, there was interest in having the form as a link where people can go and download, I would suggest that um, not as a Google form, but as a Google document, like a Word doc uploaded to Google where people could download the form. I, I think it would be challenging for the um, program planners and reviewers in the output formula format that um, Google Forms comes out, I think that would make it really challenging to evaluate and review and disseminate that to the reviewers. Thank you, thank you. That's really helpful. Um, and I actually, just out of curiosity, I'm throwing in this poll because I wanna know um, how many folks have um, participated in the annual meeting in different ways. So real quick questions here, if folks don't mind, I think it's anonymous, um, what pops out. So I have submitted an abstract or full session proposal in the past, and I have reviewed an abstract. So two kind of roles in the annual meeting here. All right, so a third of you, I, I know that it seems kind of like mundane to go through the screen sharing of it, but I really appreciate that the team did it because I know, I mean, personally, when I started doing anything with professional associations, what, what seems like old hat to me now felt like, what, who, what are these sections? Where do I put my, you know, and then when it asks you why you're qualified to speak, you know, when you're a student and you're like, I don't know, am I qualified? <laughs> so I, I think um, just recognizing kind of the process and talking about it a little is helpful. And I would love if folks who have been doing this for a while would just maybe throw in the chat a sentence or so of, you know, a bullet point of what you wish you knew when you first submitted an abstract for the first time or lessons learned. 
um, because it looks like a third of our folks here, you know, they might not participate in the annual meeting, but if they want to, that might be helpful advice. And then I'm and, guessing- And adding to what you just yeah. said, Natalie, uh, I would like to say that in terms of why are you qualified or not, that it's, in my viewpoint, it's basically having a very short bio that explains what type of connection you have with environmental health. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a super complicated statement. <laughs> it's more like getting people to, to think about why they're interested in presenting and why they should. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I love the lessons learned coming through. So keep them coming. Meanwhile, I don't know if folks, if our program planners want to say anything about the review process. So it looks like 63% of folks on this call have participated in that, but if, if we want to make a plug for why that's so valuable and, and that we will need folks. We will need folks and reviewing sure. is great. <laughs> um, I've reviewed for, I don't know, the last three or four years now. Um, and a few things that I've enjoyed about it is uh, just learning about some new research that's coming up uh, and uh, you know, getting a sense of, you know, how to, on a personal level, it also helps uh, to make me a stronger uh, abstract writer because you can see clearly, you know, what works and what could use a little bit more work and being able to provide uh, some support and feedback to, uh, to people writing abstracts, I think is also an important role. Um, that's just, my experience, but it's been great. And uh, yeah, if you even if you haven't presented before, I strongly encourage folks to uh, sign up to review abstracts. It's it's really great learning. I agree with Ursula. Um, I started reviewing abstracts while I was a doctoral student, and um, like she said, it really helped me, you know, um, improve my abstract writing and um, be updated every you know, what's going on in the field, you know, um, so and it's also something as a student, then uh, it'd be nice to put on your CV or your resume, you know, abstract reviewer for, you know, an environment section. So um, definitely um, as a student, you can go ahead and sign up to be an abstract reviewer. Uh, in the long run, it, it's, a, it's a benefit, a huge benefit for you. So, um, and, and you can uh, pick topics that you are more familiar with yes. so it's not that Absolutely. I mean sometimes you may land uh, on a topic that you are less familiar with if there are uh, more abstracts than we had anticipated and does with or we don't just have enough uh, reviewers but when you sign up to be a reviewer you can pick the topics you're most comfortable with and normally it's possible to honor those uh, picks. Any other questions or you can follow up with us obviously after this meeting, but we just wanted to give give that overview um, for those who, especially for those who are new, but also um, recognizing that it's something we all kind of fumble through. So um, hopefully we can hear about the work you're doing in the communities you're working with or for um, or representing yourself and whether that be research or practice, there's really room I think um, in the, in the scientific sessions to capture a lot of different um, important work. Yeah, Jenny. Um, I, I think the the one other thing that I would mention um, that is worth throwing out there is uh, some institutions offer some can offer some support sometimes for you to attend the annual meeting if you are presenting at the annual meeting. Um, I don't know what the ways are in all the different kinds of institutions. I've mostly worked in NGO uh, public health organizations, but that's the sort of thing that you probably need to be thinking about well in advance. So even while you're developing your abstract and submitting it, exploring whether your university or your um, grant funded research project or your uh, public health NGO or public health agency has some sort of fund to help support your travel and registration for the annual meeting. You know, it's worth looking into that ahead of time because if your abstract is accepted, you do want to be able to go and then um, be able to do that presentation uh, and that can help. 